Hi, it's Craig here. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the basic program that's put into these Samurais and how you can adjust it to make your robot a little bit more effective. Uh, there's going to be a lot of add-ons we can put onto the Samurai we'll talk about later, but in this case I just kind of want to talk about the Arduino and how it works it's with the code is set up on this little robot. So I'll just share the Arduino screen right here. There we go. So you can see uh, the Arduino screen starts off with a little bit of a uh, little bit of text here. Every time you see a double line like this, a double slash, that means it's going to be a, a comment. So nothing after this point actually is part of the program. Then we begin with a bunch of what are called what are called include statements. On the include statements, uh, give you access to headers, uh, library headers which include all the basic functions that the Arduino can do. Uh, you really need to have the Arduino.h running in order to run Arduino code. But we can load in other headers too. We can load in headers for operating servos, headers for operating the serial connector, headers for operating uh, sonar or in infrared range finders, all kinds of headers. More about this later, but the only one we need to worry about right now is including the header Arduino.h. This block right here, these are all definitions. And what we're doing here is we're taking pin numbers as assigned on the Arduino and defining them as text, which is easier for us to understand than a pin number. You may know that pin number 21 is uh, involved in the left motor, but if you describe pin number 21 as left motor A, then you'll know exactly what it's doing. Pin number 21 looks hooked up to the top side of left motor A. And pin number 12 is left motor B. Uh, right motor A and right motor B are hooked up to Arduino pins 13 and, and 12. Um, the next, next set of pins, 10 and 9, are the enable right motor and enable left motor. So it's one thing to have the right motor and left motor hooked up, but we have to enable them in order to have them run. And that's what those two are doing. And the next two lines, are going to be the line sensors, the, uh, the two little line sensors on the bottom, infrared, the uh, infrared uh, optical reflective sensors. Okay. Now there's a bunch of general purpose IOs we put in here as well. Uh, I've included those even though we don't use them in this immediate program, but the Arduino's got a number of very useful input output ports on here, which gives us access to dozens of digital signals that we can use for all kinds of things. And these parts are broken down into uh, blocks. There's port B, there's port C, and port D. Now port B uses pins 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, uh, and so on from the Arduino. So here we can see uh, all the definitions for port B. Port C includes, it's hooked up to those pins, and uh, port C are also analog ports, which are sort of useful. That gives us access to variable voltages rather than just discrete zero and five volt signals. Um, pin 14 is not only port C0, but it's also port A. We also have port D we're defining down here. So port D1 uh, is hooked up to pin one of the Arduino and PD7 is hooked up to pin seven, seven of the Arduino. Um, one thing you may notice if you look on the circuit boards very carefully, you can actually see the port B, C, and D, all those pins labeled on here. And you have this header strip, which is connected right by the microprocessor. So you have instant access to all these pins if you want to hook them up to your own uh, additions. All right, this next spot I'm going to show you guys is uh, also definitions, but these are definitions of variables, okay? Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is the fact that these variables, all of them are integers. They're 8-bit variables. Uh, those 8-bit numbers can be anywhere from 0 to 255 in magnitude. So we're defining various variables like pulse width modulation left, and we're setting it to 250. Uh, pulse width modulation right is 250. The left eye is 50, the right eye is 50, speed limit is 150, current limit is was uh, zero, and forward flag is zero. Now you'll notice at this point, and from now on, every time you finish with a, a, an integer definition or an instruction, we always end with a semicolon. And there's the two slashes, which indicate we've got uh, some comments going on. Okay, and that sort of sets up all our variables and our definitions. Now let's, uh, let's look at the initial setup 
for the for the robot. It's called void setup. Void because it doesn't transmit any data. It doesn't receive any data. It's just the setup information. Always starts with the curly queue. You can see, and there's the other end of the curly queue right there. So when I selected it here, it automatically shows up there. And I can see where the brackets are. Every left bracket has to have a right bracket someplace. Um, the first set of instructions right here are involved in the serial I.O. Now, we haven't got serial I.O. on the basic robot, but it's easy to add on. If you want to put a serial I.O. on your robot, this is a little $5 serial board right here, and it allows me to communicate with my rope, with my computer, and the robot can tell it what the variables are, what the light sensors are, and what, what it's doing uh, through serial communications, if you choose to use that. Um, this is an automatic calibration. Uh, this is for calibrating the left eye and the right eye. So what it's doing is the left eye and the right eye, these little optical sensors in the bottom, are being read. So we have an analog read, line left, right? And then and that gives us an image of whatever it's sitting on, usually the black sumo ring. So we'll get a number from that. And I'm going to add 100 to that number, and that's going to become my threshold. So this means that when you set it down and first turn it on, it's automatically going to calibrate these eyes to about 100 points over top of the uh, whatever level it sees here. Um, when it sees a full reflection, it's almost 255. When it sees pitch black, it's very close to zero. But it's going to be some number between those. And this helps us set, set the threshold. Okay, These pins, what we're doing here in these pin modes, is we're setting all these pins to be outputs. Now, the beautiful thing about the Arduino is that these pins can be either inputs or outputs. It's user definable. So it's uh, in the old days, some pins were inputs, some pins were outputs, and you couldn't mix them up. But on the Arduino and the Atmel chip, any pin can be an input or an output within, within reason. There's a couple of caveats to that. So you can see here, uh, we're setting the right motor A, right motor B, left motor A and left motor B, that's the top of the right motor and bottom of the right motor, top of the left motor and the bottom of their left motor, as you can see here right where, they, where they connect on. Uh, we're going to set them as outputs. We're also going to turn the enables on, the enable uh, right motor and the enable left motor on as outputs, right? The last uh, two pin modes we're going to set up here are the sensor inputs, uh, line right and line left, and we're going to set those as inputs. Okay, so those are going to be analog inputs. And then now, uh, if we had the serial card, we got five seconds to go. And uh, I've set the delay to only half a, half a second, much shorter. And I, and I printed serially go. So you can actually see the thing start. So this is the setup routine right here. All right, here's the main program. Very simple little program. The program starts with a void, means nothing's returned, nothing's uh, sent, and it starts at these curly brackets. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to check to see, these are just commented out, these are, these are not instructions required. Okay. While the analog read of the line right, that means we're doing an analog read of the uh, right eye, if it's greater than right eye and analog line left is greater than left eye, we're going to be going forward. Okay, so what we're saying here is the analog read. If the analog read, the number you're reading, is larger than the threshold, then we want to make it go forward. Okay? Now, when it's going forward, we're going to, uh, we're going to do this thing. If forward flag equals zero, so we're doing what's, we're setting a flag, we're gonna take a bit and set it to zero. So if the forward flag is zero, we want to bear to the right. That means we're gonna be going to the right with a, a bit of a turn, right? It's gonna be bearing to the right. And this is a procedure, which we're gonna look at a little bit later, and it's gonna keep looking at that procedure over and over again, right? So as long as the eye sensors don't see a white line, it's going to keep going forward. Now, if you've already gone forward once, like if you've already gone into this bear right routine once, you can see this is the bear right routine right here, um, where we'll talk about that in a minute. We've set the forward flag to one. 
Now that means we don't have to go here again. We don't have to execute these instructions a second time. So we'll go back to the main program and it's just gonna keep looping around here until, until the sensors in the front see the white line at the edge. If they see the white line at the edge, it's gonna fail this while, it's gonna fall out of it and it's gonna say, if the analog line right is less than the threshold, that means it sees a great reflection. If it's less than a reflection, then uh, it sees dark. Then it sees, actually, if it means if it sees a light, then it's going to break. Man, this is all screwed up. I'm going to, I am not happy with this. I'm going to have to start this thing again. So let's just stop sharing that. Ah, oh, crap. Share screen. No, 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 I'm going to stop recording. Stop recording.